Universal Control was a big feature that was announced last year at WWDC. The point of this feature is to control your Mac or your iPad from the other device. Meaning if I'm sitting on a Mac, I can use the keyboard and trackpad that is attached to that Mac, whether it's the MacBook Pro's keyboard or a Bluetooth keyboard that's paired with it or Bluetooth trackpad or mouse or whatever, I can use that to then work on my iPad. Pretty cool. And it works vice versa as well. So if you're working from an iPad, you can move the cursor over to the Mac and work on the Mac straight from the Magic Keyboard, straight from this guy. Pretty cool. I, I This is a feature I'm very excited for. But there's also a couple of other ways that the Mac and the iPad talk to each other. And now that I'm working from both devices, I wanted to cover them all. This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. So before we get too far into this, I do want to say Universal Control requires iPadOS 15.4 and macOS 12.3. These are new releases, so make sure your stuff is up to date if it's not working for you for some reason. Okay, so first let's talk about how you set up Universal Control. So you need to connect the Mac and the iPad together. So in order to set this up, you have to set it up on the Mac. Whether you wanna use the iPad keyboard or trackpad, doesn't matter, you have to pair them from a Mac. So we're gonna go into System Preferences, Display. First, click on Universal Control and make sure the first option in this area is selected. This will enable Universal Control. I also like to make sure the other two options in this section are connected. So the first of the two will allow you to move the cursor from one device to another, it allows you to push through. And then the second of the two will automatically reconnect devices that you've connected for universal control already to reconnect when they're near. This makes it nice so you don't have to manually go in and reconnect them every single time you want to use universal control. To set up universal control on the iPad, go into settings, general, airplay and handoff, and make sure cursor and keyboard beta is turned on. Then on the Mac, select add display. And then there's a section called Link Keyboard and Mouse. From there, you're gonna select your iPad. And now this can actually be more than one iPad. It looks like currently up to three iPads are supported for just one Mac. And you can also pair multiple Macs together. So I was able to pair my MacBook Pro and my Mac Mini together. And then once you have these all connected, you can adjust how the displays line up or which position they're in or where they connect. So you can move them to the bottom or the side or the left or the top, however you wanna move it. It works really well. And wherever you adjust that is when you start to move the cursor over, you will see kind of this little sidebar start to peek out and you just force the cursor past it and boom, you have universal control. Now, when you're using universal control, so say I have the mouse and trackpad paired to my Mac, but I move it, move the cursor over to my iPad. So the cursor's over there, but that also means my keyboard will be working on the iPad, not the Mac. Even though that keyboard is physically plugged into the Mac, it'll be working on the iPad. So wherever the cursor is, that's the device you're controlling. And like I said, you can use the mouse or the keyboard from the iPad or from the Mac. It doesn't matter, it goes vice versa. It doesn't matter which one you use. Now, one thing I did find is for external keyboard and mouse, especially ones that pair via Bluetooth, I found them to be a bit more laggy when they were paired to the iPad and I was moving to the Mac as opposed to when they were paired to the Mac and then moving to the iPad. So the best experience I had was pair all the devices to the Mac and then use universal control to move the cursor over to the iPad. That seemed to work best for me. Now I'm just one data point, so it's not exactly like scientific evidence, but that was just my experience. When everything was paired to the iPad, what was happening is a lot of times I would do keyboard shortcuts and it would get confused as to which computer it was controlling, whether it was controlling the iPad or the Mac at the time. So I would hit command H and be on my iPad, but then it would hide the window on my Mac. Or if I was on the Mac and hit command H, it would then go back to the home screen on the iPad. So there was just like a few little bugs like that. But when I paired everything to the Mac, it was solid. This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. Trade Coffee is a service for getting the freshest coffee you will enjoy sent straight to you. They ship free to you and as often as you like, whole or ground. What I like about Trade Coffee is they have this coffee quiz. So you take the quiz and it gives you recommendations based on your answers. So I've tried four different types of cold brew. All of these were recommended based on the results of my coffee quiz and I've liked all of them so far. They, they've been great. 
The latest one I tried is called Dominic's Organic Cold Brew. It has flavors of chocolate, vanilla, and caramel. I mean, that just sounds amazing. And it is. When signing up, you can choose to get a one-off bag or you can sign up for a subscription. For most of the coffee I've been getting, I've been getting one-off bags because I like to try different things and I honestly wasn't sure what I would like. So far, I've liked it all. Right now, Trade is offering $20 off your first three bags if you use the link in the description below. That's drinktrade.com forward slash lolly. Uh, you can also take the coffee quiz there as well. My thanks to Trade for sponsoring this video. Okay, so Universal Control has just been absolutely game changing for the way I work at this desk over here. So I recently got uh, the LG 5K 2K, it's this ultra wide monitor. It's great for video editing and photo editing and that kind of creative work. Like you get like a nice big landscape to just open up your windows. But I also like having my iPad next to me and working there. So uh, I backed the MagFloat on Kickstarter. A few months ago, I got access to the prototype. I made a video about that. Um, but I now have the final version here. I backed it with my own money, uh, not a sponsorship or anything. I paid for it. So I put my iPad on the MagFloat. I'm working away on my Mac. And then I could just move the cursor over. Boom, and I can interact with my iPad. And I've been doing a lot like of productivity stuff on my iPad. So what I'll do is as I'm like editing video or editing photos, I have my task manager and calendar up on my iPad so I can go over and reference that stuff. Or I'll have drafts up so I can see notes and stuff on the video I'm editing. It's just so nice to be able to have that extra you know, space, that extra monitor. And really that's what it is, is it's really a second monitor. But instead of it having Mac OS running on it, I have iPad OS, my favorite OS. One really cool thing is you can actually drag and drop content from the Mac to the iPad and from the iPad to the Mac. So if I have like an image, I can drag it from the Mac and drop it into photos on the iPad, or I can drag a photo from the iPad OS and drop it into the Finder on the Mac. Now I have found dragging and dropping content to be limited. Like it's really specific to like files and photos and stuff like that. Like I can't drag a task from things over to the Mac and like it'll open things on the Mac or something like that. It, it just doesn't work like that. The other thing that I found is is you need to make sure you have the way prepped. So if I am dragging a photo from Mac OS into photos on iPad OS, before I start the drag, I need to have photos open on iPad OS because once I start the drag, I, there you, you just can't you can't click on the screen anywhere to open photos. So that is a bit of a bummer. I mean, you can still use spotlight and stuff on, with the keyboard. And you can still tap on the screen. Um, but like when you're in the moment, you kind of like, oh no, I forgot to do this. So that's a little weird. Um, I know the gang over at Mac Stories, they have talked a lot about having a shelf built right into iOS, iPad OS, and Mac OS. And I think that would be great. So the idea of the shelf is you have a place to store content and it's a system wide feature. So like as you're starting to drag something, you can just put it there, you know, do your thing on the other device and then the shelf can sync between devices and then you can just drag it to where you need to be. That would be fantastic. Okay, so there's a couple of other ways the iPad and the Mac talk to each other, and I've never really covered them on the channel because, well, I never really talked about using a Mac and the iPad before until, you know, a couple months ago. Uh, and together, they work really well. So the first feature, and it's been around for a while, most of you probably know it already, but I want to mention it for those that don't, is Handoff. Handoff is a excellent feature. It's, it's a really smart feature. So you may see this uh, from time to time when you have your iPad open or your Mac open and say you have a document or a calendar event open. You might see an icon pop up in the dock for the other device from the app that you have open on the opposite device. So let's say I have a calendar event open on my Mac. You might see the calendar event icon in the dock in iPad OS. So I could tap that and it will then hand off that data and open it in uh, iPad OS on my iPad. And that's just pretty cool. Like that's just a nice way of bridging the gap between the two. Um, you could do things with like documents and all sorts of different things. Uh, it's just, it works really well. And then the other thing is Sidecar. When Sidecar came out, I didn't really talk about it because I didn't even own a Mac at the time. So I was like, okay, yeah, it's a cool feature. But what Sidecar does is it basically allows you to make 
your iPad, a second monitor for Mac OS. So side, Sidecar is kind of like universal control, but universal control allows you to stick with iPad OS on your iPad. Sidecar shows Mac OS and like basically makes it a second display for your Mac. Pretty cool. You can also set it up to mirror your Mac as well. And you do this under system preferences, basically the same place we set up universal control, but instead you pick add display and then you pick your iPad and it will extend or you can set it up to mirror your Mac display. Sidecar works great if you need extra space when you're working solely in Mac OS. Like if you have an application that's only on Mac OS, but you need that extra space, it works great for that kind of thing. Handoff is great for passing data between the two. So say you start something on your iPad, but you want to finish it on your Mac, you could do it that way. And then universal control is best for when you just want to work at both devices. And that's where I'm at. That's what I want to do. I just want to work at both devices. So I'm really enjoying universal control. And I think it's a great feature. If you have both a Mac and an iPad that's running the latest OS, um, check it out. So that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. That's universal control and that's the ways the iPad and the Mac work together. Let me know what you think in the comments below. My thanks to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. Thank you all for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already and have a great day.